The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is again our Old Testament reading for this past Sunday, the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. Again, thinking of the wise men and their worship of the infant Jesus. But we're looking at Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 to 10, where Jeremiah writes, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Ah, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am only a child. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a child. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. My dear friends in Christ, as we look at this reading which talks about the Lord calling Jeremiah to be one of his prophets, well, the Lord called him to serve the people of Judah during the years before the Babylonian captivity and then as that captivity began and, well, the Jews, many of the Jews were carried off into captivity, Jeremiah served the ones that were left behind in a destroyed Jerusalem. Well, under these circumstances, Jeremiah was called by the Lord to be his prophet. And, and Jeremiah says, the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. There's that wonderful call that Jeremiah had, and he had the, the task, no, the tough task, of proclaiming God's judgment or discipline on God's people because of their rejecting God, because of their worshiping idols. And his message, of course, was not really Jeremiah's message, it was God's message and God's message to those people was not one that was that popular. It did win Jeremiah a good deal of enemies who went after him and attacked him. And well, when Jeremiah was first called, just a young man, 20 years old, and as a young man like that, it wasn't even appropriate for him yet to speak publicly or to speak in the presence of older men. So when Jeremiah said to the Lord, Ah, sovereign Lord, I do not know how to speak. I am only a child. We can really understand Jeremiah's reluctance here. But the Lord said to him, do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you. Ah, there's God's promise to be with Jeremiah. That promise should have given him all the encouragement and the strength that he needed to, to go forward as the Lord's prophet and to speak, well, the words of the Lord, which the Lord gave to Jeremiah to those people. Our, our reading says, then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Oh, we can only imagine what that must have been like for Jeremiah because I mean, it says here, that the Lord reached out his hand and touched Jeremiah's mouth. How that exactly happened, we, we don't know, but it was this wonderful symbolic act through which the Lord was showing Jeremiah, who said he didn't know how to speak, 
he, the Lord was showing him that he was giving to Jeremiah the very word of the Lord to speak. The Lord gave Jeremiah his word, as the Apostle Peter would write. Prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. As the Lord's prophet proclaiming the words that God put into his mouth, Jeremiah's preaching ended up ultimately doing two things. One is described here as uprooting, tearing down, destroying, and overthrowing. And that's what law preaching does. Law preaching, it shows us our sin. It shows us that we daily sin much and indeed deserve nothing but punishment, that we deserve the wages of sin, which is death, eternal death. That's what we deserve. It, oh, for example, would tell us that we haven't been the law and gospel witnesses to the world that God would really want us to be. Gospel preaching, on the other hand, though, it instead of the tearing down, destroying, well, according to our reading, it does building and planting. Through gospel preaching, what the Holy Spirit does is he plants or builds faith in people's hearts. Through the gospel, we were called to faith. During Jeremiah's ministry, it seems as if he did a lot more of that tearing down or destroying a lot more of that law preaching because of how the people were largely rebelling against God. But, did, but God did also use him to build and to plant. Through the prophet Jeremiah, there must have been people who were reached and the Holy Spirit through Jeremiah's preaching and teaching called people to faith build people in the faith, we could say. And then, of course, the, the building, the planting, calling them to faith, building them up, strengthening them in their faith. And what God does is, well, still through us, he uses the words that he gave to Jeremiah in the books of Jeremiah, Lamentations, to call people to faith in Jesus. The Lord gives us his words so that like Jeremiah, what we can do, well, actually the Holy Spirit does the work, but he does that through us. He does the work of uprooting and tearing down, destroying and overthrowing, to plant and to build, to use the law to show us our sin, to use the gospel to create and build up and strengthen faith. Oh, what a chilly overcast day there was a horseman who spied this little sparrow lying on its back in the road and reining in his mouth mount the horseman looked down and asked the little sparrow why are you lying upside down like that the little bird replied i heard the sky would fall today and the horseman just laughed at that and said, I suppose your spindly little legs can hold up the sky. To which the little bird just said, one does what one can. You know, it's a big job for us to go and make disciples of all nations. That's a huge task for us to do. But may we have the same attitude that that little bird had. Let's do what we can to witness to those around us and to support mission work. The Lord has given us his word. And we think, when we think about how God has blessed us through his word, and, and we'll think about it. We were unbelievers. We've been called to faith. We were blind and now we see. We were lost and we're found. When we think about how that word has blessed us, don't we want to be like that little sparrow and do what we can so more and more people can be blessed with God's word just as we are? 
Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for choosing us to be members of your believing family and heirs of heaven. Thank you also for choosing us to be your witnesses, to share the message of your grace and love. Help us not to be afraid to be your witnesses by reminding us that you are always with us and you have given us your wonderful word to bless us and to bless our hearers. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus, we pray in your name. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.